Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next question. Um, this is uh, from Numbers twenty four seventeen. Uh, it says, "A star shall come out of Jacob, or out of Jacob." Uh, but Matthew two seems to uh, use that to, you know, to push out their. Uh, idea that it was the star they were supposed to be following, you know. Uh, okay, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, uh, Where is this king born to the Jews? We have seen a star in the east and are co- have come to worship him. Um, and I think it goes to mention it again later. But there's, there, I'm guessing that's what Matthew is using to connect uh, to try to make the story more valid is by using um, the idea from Numbers twenty four seventeen. Does that make sense? Is there any thoughts you? I think if if somebody applies these are the, uh, the words of Billam, if someone says that this is referring to Jesus, you're creating a very serious problem because, as it turns out, the text says that the one who bears the scepter, the means of the person who is of royalty, that person is going to defeat the enemies of God. Instead of just going through this text, I'd like to do this differently and just say, sure, it's referring to the Messiah. It's ultimately a prophecy that the Jewish people who will not be cursed, that God has prevented that, uh, prevented Bilam, a non-Jewish prophet, from cursing the Jewish people, but instead he blesses the Jewish people. The blessing says ultimately that the Mashiach will pierce the nobles, the enemies of God, namely Moab and the the enemies of the children of Israel. To make this really easy, if this is in fact a prophecy about the Messiah, then this demonstrates that Jesus couldn't possibly be the Messiah. Now, going back to Matthew, uh, this has nothing to do with anything with Matthew. And Matthew is, uh, we have a very unique infancy narrative where um, people of the East are uh, coming to, are following a, apparently a star that's very slow moving and very low altitude and finding their way, and this is early Matthew chapter 2, and finding their way to Herod's palace and then only to be guided by the star to, um, to Jesus' home in Bethlehem. What does that have to do with the promise that the Messiah is going to destroy the enemies of the Jewish people. Uh, Meaning they're not related to each other. Two is, instead of, I I think the approach that most people take is, well, they go, well, if you look at, I say, I grant everything. If I grant that this is talking about the Messiah, that this is a prophecy that the Jewish people, that the, that the way this ends is the Jewish people will defeat their enemy under the leadership of the Messiah. I, gr- I grant that. It, it obviously bears no resemblance to Matthew chapter 2. It's very, that's very clear. But what you, if I grant that, then you, the Christian, have all your work ahead of you. You haven't solved the problem. You haven't produced a prophecy that describes... Uh, Jesus, you have just added to the list of this huge list of things that that the Messiah is supposed to do that Jesus did not fulfill. Uh, But in fact, uh, it it can continue on, that Edom is going to be conquest, it is going to be defeated, and so on. So here we have a prophecy of the destruction of the enemies of Israel. Well, as it turns out in the Christian story, Jesus didn't defeat uh, the enemy he didn't defeat Edom, rather Rome squashed him like a gnat, especially if you read the Gospels. Now, if Christians want to say, well, he's going to accomplish these things in the second coming, then you're conceding that he didn't fulfill it, and he's going to somehow do this in the future. Well, if you can do it in the future and he hasn't done it yet, then anybody can be the Messiah. Ah, he didn't do anything. It's because he will do it in the future. So, number one, this these texts do not in any, except for the word star there, there is nothing here that remotely resembles what we find in Matthew chapter 2. Uh, secondly, I grant everything. I say, sure, this is all talking about the Messiah. If it is, that means 
Christianity has to be a false religion, period. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Amazon.com will carry this handsome guy's books for you. You'll see them uh, also at the website. Let uh, I keep on calling your website. Let's get biblical Q and A. <laughs> uh, Outreachjudaism.org. You can get his uh, books, his audio files. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, the audio files are not available uh, currently. They, I mean, they're available. The files are, pardon me, but not the CD set. Um, so until until I can get. Rabbi, to build us like 500,000 more copies to where we can actually get them out to you. Uh, you can go to the website and actually download the MP3 files to your phone, to your computer. Um, they are they are there where you can get them one at a time for free. If you want to make a donation of any amount, you can download the entire series, which will go really wonderfully with his two-volume book set. And so if you don't have that already, uh, you need to. And uh, this is, a, a <laughs> I love this picture. My wife sent this to me uh, uh, yesterday. This is my daughter, Sarah. She's sitting here with her own copy, uh, Compliments of Rabbi Singer. <laughs> she totally loves his books, man. So do we. This is great. <laughs> יציר נברא לעת נעשה בחף צוקו אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נורא והוא היה והוא עובד, והוא עובד, והוא יהיה בתפארה. אדון עולם אשר מלך בטרם כל יציא נברא לעת נשא וחפצה כל הזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי ככילות הכל